Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I'm talking about hypothesis testing. In this video, there's a lot of vocabulary, so stick with me and we'll look at some examples in this video and coming up in ex the next videos that will help explain more about it. But I need to get the vocabulary out there. So in statistics, a hypothesis is a claim or statement about a property of a population. Remember, we have these large populations and we take a sample to try to make sense of what we're looking at in the large population. This property is often a population parameter such as a proportion, a mean, or a standard deviation. Hypothesis testing is a procedure for testing a claim about a property of the population. This can also be called a test of significance. We can use confidence intervals or p-values for hypothesis testing. When a population parameter falls outside a confidence interval, or if a p-value is very low, or if a test statistic is more extreme than a critical value, we suspect something is amiss. So we have different ways to decide, does this claim that people are making, does this make sense? Examples of hypothesis that could be tested using hypothesis testing are like a college psychology class hypothesizes that the mean GPA for students with study groups is greater than 3.0. Since we're talking about mean, we're using mu. A company believes that the proportion of senior citizens that are comfortable with unmanned cars is less than 0.65. So that's a proportion using p. A population of grade school, the population of grade school children has IQ scores with a standard deviation equal to 15. So then we'd say standard deviation equals 15. Notice we can have greater than, less than, equal to. There's different ways we can state our claims. Before jumping to the math involved with hypothesis testing, consider the context of the data, the source of the data, and the sampling method used to obtain the sample data. Here are the contents of a hypothesis test. And again, maybe reading through this with all this vocabulary is not going to be that useful. And the more useful piece will come when we look at the examples, but I want to put the steps out there. First of all, identify the claim and express it in symbolic form. That's what we were doing here. We're saying here's the claim and here's what it would look like symbolically. Identify the null and alternative hypothesis from the given claim and express them symbolically. The next video is entirely set aside to do that, identify the null and alternative hypothesis. And I think if you watch that video, you'll have a pretty good idea about it. The null hypothesis is stated with H sub zero, and um, it's always using equal to, less than equal to, or greater than equal to. So it always has an equality part to it. An alternative hypothesis which is H sub 1, usually what I use, but H sub A, either capital or not capital, are very common ways to say alternative hypothesis. That's all the same thing. And those are either stated with does not equal, or is less than, or is greater than. So that's the difference when we state them, we use different symbols. We always want to identify the significance level. That will be provided for you. That's not something you have to decide. Um, usually 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 are the significant levels that we'll be looking at. We have to be able to calculate the value of the test statistic. Um, and then we can either use the p-value method where we identify the p-value and then compare that to the significance level. Or we can use the critical values method where we identify the critical values and then use the critical regions to make a decision about the claim. And we'll show you how to do that. Um, and then we state the conclusion about the claim. And when we state the conclusion, we either reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So the conclusion that we make are always in reference to the null hypothesis. The choice is to reject or fail to reject the null. Never accept the null hypothesis because the null is assumed to be true and we're trying to prove it wrong. So we either say, oh, it's, we proved it wrong or we failed to prove it wrong, essentially. If we reject the null, then, the null, then we are saying that the data supports the alternative hypothesis. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we're saying that we have a problem. We have proven the null hypothesis to be true in a way, but we never accept it. We never say that. We say reject or fail to reject. And remember the rare event rule, we've talked about it before. If the probability of an observed event is exceptionally small, 
we conclude the assumption is probably not correct. So an example, we think that the mean height of the entire population of the United States is 78 inches. We collect data and carry out a hypothesis test and find that our sample mean of 68 inches would only occur 0.002% of the time if our assumption of 78 inches is correct. 0.002% is extremely rare. So we would conclude that our assumption must be incorrect and we would reject the null hypothesis. So if this, if we say that the average height is 78 inches and then we do a whole study and we come up with 68, that's really different. And what we would say then is maybe we had it wrong from the beginning and 78 inches is not correct. Okay, in the next video, we'll start talking more about these things. Have a fantastic day and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the videos I'm making as they come out.